me just say this to somebody tonight. Okay? And please, 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 please have an open heart to receive tonight. Okay? Because what I got to share with you is super good. And it's hard. Let me tell you this. It's hard for people to receive when you have a wall up. Okay? It's, it's hard for people to receive that when you come in and you kind of have a wall up about things. Don't, don't do that. If, you're, if, you, if you made an effort to get dressed, you made an effort to drive your car and, and use some gas, you know, uh, to get to the, to the church grounds, at least leave, put the wall down when you come in and walk in here because God has something for each and every one of you. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Even if one person was here tonight, God would have something for them. Amen. I promise you that God would have something for them because he honors your time. He honors your efforts. You, you might be thinking, well, man, God, is God really? the moment you decided, the moment you made a decision to say, I'm going to church tonight, Soraya, I'm going to church tonight. God's got something for you. Okay, so what I want to say to you tonight, if you do have some obstacles or distractions or, or confusions going on, or there's something in your heart, or something with your relationship, or something with your money, or something with all kinds of chaos that's just breaking loose in, in your life, right now, I'm going to ask you, put that to the side. Because if you keep thinking about that while I'm speaking the word of God, it's, it's not gonna, you're not going to allow it to get in there and do the work that it needs to do. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Yes, sir. Okay? So put the walls down tonight and all that stuff that's been going on, put it to the side. Do your best. Clear your mind. And, and I want you to pray with me. Say this. Say, Father God, Father God open, up open up the eyes of my understanding so that I may comprehend the scriptures. I lay aside every unnecessary weight at this moment, and I'm receiving what you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. One more time, let's give God a praise. Come on, amen, come on. But like, man, there's a lot of hand clapping in this church, amen, because we know God's up to something. You know, God's up to something. If you're here tonight, it's not by coincidence. God's up to something tonight, and he's, and he's going to put something inside you that's going to just completely revolutionize your life. Come on, somebody. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Can alguien puede decir amen? Oh, I'm going to be preaching uh, on the 24th of January at His Joy Fellowship. You know where that's at? In Spanish. On a Friday night. They asked me, they said, we felt the Lord... We felt the Lord put your name in our hearts that you were to come on a Friday night and come share with our people. And then when he said in Spanish, I was like, that ain't the Lord. No. <laughs> <laughs> ain't the Lord, man. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and, and I was like, whoa, what, what, what? So I'm going to talk to them tomorrow and find out if I need to bring my own interpreter. Anybody know any? Sister Polly. Hey, Sister Polly. I might have you come with me if they, if they don't provide one for me there. You, you better say in Spanish what I'm saying. Because you're going to be like. <laughs> I'm going to be like, Polly, I didn't say that. That's not what I, that's not what I said. Yo no dije eso. I'm being Spanish. Anyway, so that's powerful, right? Ain't that? So I want to invite you guys to come hang out with us over there. But don't, don't think about going to that church now. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Praise God. Anyway, so I'll be over there doing that. Um, um, where am I? Okay, so tonight, here's what I want to share with you guys, right? You have an open heart, open mind, open ears to hear what I got for you. Here's what I want to talk about. I want to continue talking about insight because how many of y'all know and believe and already received that this is your year of insight? Come on, somebody. This is your year of insight. God's going to give you some insight onto what you need to do. This year, you're not going to make the same mistakes you, you made last year. I, I, said, I made this statement the last two Sundays in a row. I said, you know, 2019 didn't break you. It built you. Ooh. How do I know that? Because you're still here. You didn't let 2019 break you. You didn't let 2019 kill you. That's for sure. No, no. It built you. Come on, man. Some of y'all went through some stuff in 2019 that it made you stronger, praise God. It tried to bend you. It tried to break you. It tried. It tried. But boom, I'm back. Praise God. You can't break me, man. Come on now. Amen. Praise God. So, so, so um, this is a year of insight for us this year. In the beginning of this year, God spoke that to me. He said, this is what's going to happen for this church. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them insight 
And I've, I've, I've been making this statement to you guys is that we are all designed, all of us are designed to live from the inside out. But for many years, we got trained to live from the outside in. And it got us in trouble. Because let me tell you something. The outside in means that you are relying and depending on the world system to bring you strength and give you peace and give you insight. But I'm here to tell you right now, the world cares less about you. I'm just here to tell you, and that's the truth. And the world is incomplete. So it will never give you fullness of joy. It might give you a partial of happiness for a moment. You know, you get happy when it's time to eat lunch. You get happy. Bye-bye. You get all happy. But the world is never, we will never, never bring satisfaction and completion to your life. It won't. Why? Because the world does not have God. <laughs> it doesn't. And that's that system. That's the Babylonian system. That's a system that's set up for people who don't want to follow after God. If you don't want to follow after God, you'll live the Babylonian system, which is incomplete in, in its entirety. Even if it wanted to give you 100%, it couldn't because it's incomplete. Come on, man. Can we, is that good? All right, amen. So when we, when we lived our life from the outside in, it got us in trouble. But God is telling us now, you're no longer going to live that way. You are going to have to come to the realization, we are going to have to come to the realization that we are now living from the inside out. Amen. Okay? So I've been saying how God's going to give us insight. He's going to let us know where to go, what to do, that we're not going to step on landmines this year like we did last year and <laughs> blew ourselves up. We're not going to do that this year. But here's what I want to bring to the table tonight. Because if you're going to have insight, not only are you going to see what God's going to do, you're going to also want to recognize what things God needs to see and hear that may need to change. You are going to have to, we are going to have to recognize there are some things about us on the inside of us that we're going to have to give permission to God to touch. Okay, are you with me? You're going to have to give him permission. Now, he, he will do that. It's funny because, um, uh, I mean, we, God's all powerful and almighty. But he gave you the power to tell him no. What? How am I going to tell God no? Well, we tell God no all the time by certain things that we do. But watch this. He also gave us the power to say yes. Ain't that good? Ain't that good? That's good stuff. He is almighty and all powerful, yet he made you to be able to tell him no. He ain't going to force you, and he ain't going to make you. But there are some things that are on the inside of us that we really need to do. And this is what I was doing today during, during, uh, during a prayer time at 12 o'clock, because I, I, I find myself gravitating to this corner. It, it may seem a little weird, but there's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about there's a man who was praying up against the wall. And he got extended 15 years of life. Anyways, I, I've, been, I've been right here praying. And I found myself asking God to rearrange some things inside me. To rearrange. Because, you know, when we, when we come against this world, man, that world has chaos in it. It has trouble in it. It has sorrows in it. The Bible calls it tribulations. This world has that. But yet... In John chapter 16, Jesus tells us, but be of good cheer. He says, because in this world, you will find, and the King James says, tribulations. But if you go into the New Living Translation, it causes trouble and sorrows. So I've said this before, nobody in this room, and as a matter of fact, nobody in this world, whether you have Jesus or not, nobody in this world is exempt from troubles and sorrows. Nobody is exempt from tribulations. We're all going to face them. Uh, we, I like to call them circumstances and situations. What's the circumstance? It's something that is out of your control. Well, it hailed and your car windows got busted out. That was a circumstance. It was out of your control. It wasn't like you catch all the, the, the hail and I'm trying to break, you know. It still broke your windows. Or the storm came and blew your house down. 
three little pigs. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> I mean, you know, it happens. But what I'm saying is that that is a circumstance. That is something that is out of your control. But what's a situation? A situation is when you get yourself into trouble and you really didn't know that you got yourself into trouble or you may have known that you got yourself into trouble and you still did it. It's a situation. It may, it may or may not have been from a decision. Okay? But that's the situation. So I call them circumstance situations. But here's what, what, what I want to say to you is that you cannot, you cannot allow circumstances and situations or trouble and sorrow or tribulations to, to, to separate you or to move you away from God. Like, you need him to help you through this. It's bad enough that you have to go through tribulation. It's bad enough that we have to go through troubles and sorrows. But let me tell you, it's, it's better, Soraya, when you go through it with God. Man, because he'll show you some things. Most people, because they think circumstances and situations, or they think that tribulations are bigger than God, they think God can't help them through this. You know what, God? You don't understand. You don't even know what I'm going through, man. So you know what? Forget about you and forget God and forget everything else. I'm going to walk this thing through myself. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, see how it works for you. Because sure enough, prodigal son, you're going to go out there and do it. But you're going to look back one day. Man, if I could only be a servant in that house. <laughs> but you know what God's going to do? He says, I'm here. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. But just in case it doesn't work, I'll be right here. And I'll, I'll, I'll embrace you with open arms. I'll put a ring on your finger. I'll put a robe on you. And I'll even make a barbecue for you, praise the Lord. That's in the Bible. That's a Bible story right there. That's Bible. That's, that's real. That's reality. So here's what I'm saying. If you're going to have insight this year, understand that you're going you're gonna to want to really confront some of the things that are going on on the inside of you. You're going to want to give God permission to do it. Here's how David put it. In Psalms 163, I'm sorry, 139, in verse 23, this is how David put it. He said, search me, O God. <laughs> That's a bold statement. That is a bold statement. How many of you have ever asked God to search you? You, you want to know why we haven't? Because there's some things in there that we really don't want God to see. Right? 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 There's some things in there. You're like, nah. Uh, no, no, no. You ain't never going to say, search me, oh God. No, no. Here's what I'm trying to tell you this year, guys. You want to ask God to search you. What's this? Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Why? Notice, notice this, guys. We don't ask God into our lungs. No, we don't ask God into our mind. We ask God into our heart. Why? Because Jeremiah says that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Why? Because, see, we, 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 there's a part there that goes on inside there that we really need to realize and confront and face and get past these things. Because as long as you don't, they're going to keep bubbling up. They're going to keep seeping up. You know, uh, it's like that. It's like that. Uh, how many of you on here have a garbage disposal? We have a garbage disposal and that, and that thing doesn't work. But every now and then there's a little smell that comes out of there. You know what I'm saying? And it, it isn't pleasant. Because we haven't got in there yet and cleaned some of that stuff out that we need to clean. Well, it's kind of like the same. See, when, when, when it, we allow Jesus to our heart, but we don't want him to search us. And so every now and then a little cuss word come out. That's that, that's that funky smell. That's what that is. You see, like in the garbage disposal, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or anger pops out. <clears throat> you know, that, okay, that's that stench, man. <laughs> you, you haven't let God deal with that yet. You know what I'm saying? Or that addiction, or that desire, or these thoughts, and the weirdness. And, and so we want to get to the point where, yes, God's going to give us insight into his mind, insight into his heart, insight into his plans, insight into his agenda, 
insight into his, you know, assignment. But we also want to let him into our lives. Search me, oh God. Search me. Search me. Search me. Watch, let, let's keep on, let, let, pull that scripture up, please. Well, look what it says. Because this is, this is going to get, it says, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Watch this. Try me and know my thoughts. See, we might be thinking, well, God knows my thoughts. Have you given him permission? Because he's not just going to go in there. He's not. You got to allow him in there. You got to allow him into your, I mean, you got to allow him to search you. I, I looked up different translations of the, of the scripture. This is so good. In the New Living Translation, which my wife don't have it back there, but in the New Living Translation, it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Watch this. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See, some of you in here, I know you've done this because I've done this, but I, I've, I've gotten into some heated discussions back when I was lost, of course. And I say, man, you trying to test me? <laughs> y'all ever heard that? Or y'all ever said that? Don't look around. Right? You trying to test me? You know what happens when, 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 you know, you know what happens when that happens? Heart check. They try to do a heart check. You trying to test my heart, bro? You, Chris, like right now, you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. You probably just said it a couple days ago. But anyway, so. <laughs> Watch this. That'll puff you up. You trying to test me? Because you don't want that person trying to test your heart. Or you, you, want, you, want, you want heart check me? But you do want to let God do it. Let him test you. Yeah. Yeah, or, or, or say it's real easy to say it to another human being, but say it to God and see what happens. God, I'm going to pretend like you're God because you're made in his image. God, you trying to test me? God's going to say, are you going to let me? He's going to test you. You want to let him because he's giving you insight into him. So give him insight into you. Because listen, God knows how to take care of that stuff. You don't have to hide nothing from God. You really, really don't. Let him in there, man. Let him search you. Watch this other one. Look at these words, man. So good. In the message translation, it says, investigate my life. Investigate my life, oh God. Watch this. Find out everything about me. Cross-examine and test me. Watch this. Get a clear picture of what I'm about. <laughs> That's the message translation. Investigate me, God. I'll let you go. go. Why would you want to do that? So that God can see in there, man. There's some things I got to rearrange. There's some things I got to pull out. That don't belong here. Okay, let's, let's put this back over here. Oh, I feel so good, God. Yeah. You're going to breathe better now. You're going to see things clearer now. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What, what in the world is that doing there, Bert? Mm, that's whenever my wife didn't want to make me tamales and they, I, they, I got hurt. Okay, so we need to put that back over here, son. Go for it. Let him cross-examine. What's that there for? What is that doing there? What is that doing there? Wait, I didn't put that there. Wait, no, nah, that don't even belong there. Let me pull that out. Because there are some things that do need to be inside you. Like, for instance, you don't want him to pull out your appetite, but you may have an appetite for negative. So he don't, he's not going to pull out the appetite. He's just going to pull out whatever's in there that doesn't need to be there so you don't have that appetite no more. <sighs> Come on, man. Praise God. Ah. So many times I had to do that. And even today, God reminded me. And I believe that the Holy Spirit said that out of my mouth. Lord, rearrange. Rearrange me. There's some things that are in the wrong place that don't need to be there. Maybe because I allowed people to do that. Maybe because I allowed to hear this or hear that or listen to this. Or, and I shouldn't have. Man. 
Lord, rearrange. Cross-examine me. Man, ain't that good? Praise God. He's going to give you insight to him. So here's what I'm saying. Give insight. Let, uh, give him insight to you. Because he's not going to hurt you. I promise he's not going to hurt you. He's not going to judge you. He's not going to look at you like saying you're a bad son. I'm going to give you cookies. No, he's not going to do that. He's going to allow you to breathe better, to focus better, to see better, to talk better, to live life out better so that you can get his assignment and his agenda done here on this earth because there's some things that are cluttering you from that. We think it's cluttering from loving my wife. No, if you get, if you get decluttered from his assignment, I promise you you'll love your wife better. No, it's, it's, it's decluttering. It's, let him examine so that the agenda and the assignment that he has for you on this earth can get fulfilled. And part of that assignment and part of that agenda is to love your wife, is to love your children, is to live a financially blessed life, is to walk in, 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 in unity with the brothers and the sisters and the church and the pastor. And you can pray now more effectively. Watch this. Last translation, the Passion Translation. And I'll be done because it's already 8 o'clock and y'all guys got to get to eating a salad somewhere. Watch this. Watch this. God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Remember I said you got to invite him. Necesitas que invitarlo para dentro de su corazón. Dentro de su vida. Nuestra vida. Hey. Practicing. I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Oh, that means not only one time, not only two times, multiple times. Through and through. As many times as you want, God. Examine me. Through and through. Watch this. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Ooh, and I like this last line in the passage translation. Put me to the test. And sift through all my anxious cares. Ooh. Yeah, see, some of y'all in here, watch this, watch this. How many of you do not like that somebody takes your phone from you? Why? Because that thing is personal. Like, dude, that's my space, bro. Like, you want my code? You want to unlock my code and everything? You want to look through all my pictures? You want to see all my searches on Google? You want to see everything? You want to see my Instagram page? What? What are you doing? And little by little, they take it, and you're anxious, man. You're like, hurry up and give it back to me because I don't want you to see certain things in there. You know what that is an indication of? You need God to search your heart. <laughs> you need God to let him in there because there's some things that, watch this, they're in here, but they're being told through here. This is one of the most personal spaces right now in our generation right now. This phone. And it's, it's because the lifestyle, we're trying to find, what's this? We're trying to find acceptance, Facebook, social media. We're trying to find, we're, we're, we're trying to live from the outside in. God says, don't live that way. Live from the inside out, and you won't have to worry about who gets my phone. Go ahead, take it. My wife, my wife she, can, she can get my phone. She can look through her. She can do whatever she wants to do on that phone. Go ahead. And if you find something that you don't like in there, then delete it yourself. Go ahead. I'll give you permission. Or go ahead and slap me if you need to. One way and the, and the next way, however you want to do it. Because I'm, I'm going to let God search my heart. Because I'm going I'm to I'm I'm say, I ain't going to hide nothing from you, Lord. Do what you got to do. Please. I give you permission. Because this is the truth of it. Honestly. And this might sound backwards. But I would much rather get in trouble with God. Honestly. 
to get in trouble with my wife. Because if I get in trouble with God, he'll change it. And then my wife don't have to see nothing that she don't need to see. Because if I get in trouble with my wife, I already missed it. That means I, I didn't take something to God. I hope tonight that this message will help you, really, really help you to what we need to do in taking our next steps on this thing about insight. Because there are some things that really God needs to change inside of us in order for us to effectively be a blessing to others. Because the commandment says it. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And he says, and the second one is equally important or just the same. Love thy neighbor. Watch this. So most people just stay right there. Love thy neighbor. Oh, yeah, he wants us to love thy neighbor. But they forget the last part. As thyself. Hmm. You know what that means to tell me? You really can't properly love somebody else if you ain't loving yourself. And the only way that you can love yourself is to let God examine you and investigate you and test you. Search my heart, oh God. And find what's really going on inside of me. Praise God. Man. Did y'all receive that tonight? Come on, let's stand to our feet tonight. Amen.